Sports, where we review all the best sports clips from around the world. Now, you're probably wondering, why should I watch over here instead of anywhere else? And that's because over there, they don't care about what you have to say. They don't even read any of the comments. But I think it's the opposite. I think we know exactly what we're talking about. So I read every single comment. So if you think what I'm saying is the most ridiculous thing you've ever heard, let me know in the comments below. If you think what I'm saying is the most amazing thing, then definitely please let me know. Either way, let's get into some discussions, let's get into some fights, but ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of, and I think we're well on our way to doing it. So without further ado, let's get to it. We were watching a clip of First Things First, talking about basketball, talking about the NBA. Um, Chris Bussard is doing his, um, you know, bud list, his under duress. Uh, so honestly, there's not a whole lot to talk about at the top because I have no idea who he's going to put on this list. So let's just jump right into it and then we can kind of go from there. It's the show that does not have a toxic quarterback room. <laughs> <laughs> Second hour, first things first. It's a Mac Jones reference. It's also time we read some viewer mail. Uh, today, I didn't have time to go to the post office. I had to grab a late sandwich. So Christina oh. went to the post office, brought back a full satchel full of mail. I reached in, pulled out this letter. We have no idea who it's from. Wow. Okay. Can I guess? Somebody different. <laughs> yeah, guess. Who do you think it's from? I'm going to guess this one's Brian Sr. There is no Brian Sr. Oh. <laughs> How long have you been on the show? Sorry, my bad. Don and Don. Don, Don, Don. Sr. Gosh darn. Brian Brian. Brian. The twins are Ryan and Brian. Sorry. You're thinking of Uncle Brian. Yeah, my bad. Oh. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> Dear Wilds, love the show. We know you consider yourself a bottomless well of creativity. Thank you. Yet it's been weeks. And there's nothing close to replicating the joy of Cowboy Brew. <laughs> what gives? <laughs> Don Sr. Oh, I was oh, basically right. Close. The and meaner letters right are from Don Sr. He's right on the money. Well, uh, a fair point. <laughs> so I wanted to get rid of Cowboy Brew because I felt like a little bit like it was tired. But then I go on the internet and people are kind of hounding me. People at my actual address. Where's Cowboy Brew? So we have some news. <laughs> the following statement was released by Cowboy Brew on behalf of Fox Sports and the First Things First producers in response to questions about his future plans. <laughs> I'm, <still graphics. laughs> I'm back. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. What a return. I'm sorry. I had no better ideas. I tried my best that for, a, good news. for a month. For a few months. <laughs> So he's back. Cowboy Welcome Rick back. Was a cowboy. Oh, cowboy wearing the four five. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Guys, anyway, boy. here we go. Here we go. All right. At number three, it's an all NBA one, guys. Oh, wow. We're we getting into the hoop season. Anthony Davis. First of all, Anthony, congratulations. Phenomenal year. First of all, you've been healthy. He has played 52 of their 56 games. That's pretty good. That, that I, I don't think any of us would have believed that if you had told us that before the season. He's playing great, too, right there at the top of the defensive player of the year race. Uh, 25 points, 12, over 12 rebounds, two and a half blocks. Like, having a phenomenal season. So, congratulations on that, AD. Uh, at last night, 37 and 15 in a win over Utah without LeBron. And AD talked about, we found our identity. We play fast. We get to the paint. We That's what we do. And so, I like that he, you, AD, you sounded like a leader. And here's what I say. Keep that energy when LeBron gets back. All right, which will probably be the next game. You, you can't, you can't play fast like that with AD and LeBron over a long period of time. In short bursts, sure, but you can't do that, and you can't do that in the playoffs when everything gets so condensed and the games are so much more competitive, faster, more physical, and then that's why you see players like Anthony Davis and LeBron. They, they kind of start to fade in the playoffs. Not LeBron historically. LeBron recently not because of his age. But that's why. It's just a lot of pounding. It's why you see someone like um uh, a Joel Embiid be unable to handle it because his body just can't. You know, it's not a, sh it's not a lack of will. But same thing with Anthony Davis. It's not a weakness or a lack of, you know, him of effort. It's just that their bodies are incapable of handling that. And that's why the playoffs are such a different beast. Multiple seven game series you know it just it really 
matters. It really, really does matter. And you're also now playing the same team and they know how to cover you. They know what to expect. So again, those games get tighter, more closer. Um, they get more emotional because you're seeing the same players. Anyone who's ever played in any type of tournament or uh, type thing where you're playing this, uh, the same team multiple times, you know, you got your eyes on some of those players and you're like, I got you, let's go. And it's like, it's just, that's why the emotions are so much higher, the fans, everything. So this idea that they'll be able to maintain that into the playoffs, I do not buy it. I do not buy it. You are, it's time for you to take the torch. It's been time. It's way past time. Most of us have written you off and said you'll never take the torch. But now is the time, AD. Because look, as well as you've been playing, let's be honest. All the other big men that we say he's in their class, Giannis, Embiid, Jokic, we can't even imagine them playing with LeBron James, even an older LeBron, and be in the ninth seed. Mm. That is impossible. So, AD, take the torch. I'm sure LeBron's ready for you to take it and lead this team to something special. It just at least a deep playoff run. AD, I actually believe in you. All right, at number two, Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum is nice. I know Nick nice wanted guy. to keep you out of the club, superstar. That until was years he, just, ago. he kept you out <laughs> until the last moment. I mean, man, the bar was high for you, but you're in 27 points, eight boards, five assists, leading the team and all of that, the best record in the league. You're nice, but you're not yet mad nice. Oh. There's another level, mad nice, and that's where the Jokic is. I said the about Luka's, club superstar. The, now you're there's attacking. only there's not 13 or 14 <laughs> mad nice guys, all right. But to get to that next level, you have got to get some jewelry. But let's let's just go before that. There is no excuse for you, Jason, not to win the East. Am I right? Like, Embiid is hurt, and when he comes back, I, I doubt he'll be what he was doing before, for this season at least. Milwaukee's having all types of trouble. They're three and six under Doc Rivers so far. Um, Sultan there. <laughs> so I just wanted to add in I do think Tate, this is the Celtics' year to make moves. Um, you know, like the, the sea has parted for them, so to speak. Um, they are the best team. Uh, the whole Damian Lillard and uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo, that has not panned out. They had to fire their coach, which is never a good sign. It's just messy over there. And then the Sixers, of course, um, even with the healthy Joel Embiid, people had always kind of doubted. Um, but I would say the Sixers are a sneaky question mark. Um, I've had my I've had meniscus surgery three times. I've torn it twice. Uh, playing basketball in a third time in a uh, like a like a kayak accident um, saving my nephew's life um, in a river so um, I know what it's like I've had the surgery three times all three were repairs so I never got any of it cut out or removed repairs if those of you don't know um, typically when you tear your meniscus um, there's three third surgical options you remove part of the meniscus you, you know they trim it out um, they remove the whole thing or they stitch it up and repair it. You ultimately always want to repair it because that is supposed to, in theory, keep, you know, the most, um, keep your knee, um, preserve the integrity of the knee and ward off like arthritis down the road. And I believe they repaired the meniscus for um, uh, Joel Embiid. Now, the big thing is, is that the reason why Joel Embiid has not been able to play so well in the playoffs is because... It's not lack of will, just like what I said about AD and stuff, is that it's just his body takes such a beating and a toll. And unfortunately, he is a little injury prone just because of, you know, how big and strong he is. And so by the time he gets to the playoffs, he's just not the same player that he was in, say, you know, game 20. And that's always been the problem is that he's just not healthy. And he's also had really bad luck um, getting his knee injured, getting hit in the face, getting concussed breaking his orbital, orbit, orbital bone, you know, um, just things that are just unlucky, you know, just, just straight up, that's what it is. Just like how this knee injury right here was just unlucky having um, what's-his-face from the Warriors, you know, slam into him. So, um, Kaminga. And so that just is what it is. But with that said, if he actually can make a full recovery, which there's no reason to believe he shouldn't, because a meniscus surgery is pretty routine at this point, um and if, and if anything his full recovery is just pain a pain tolerance thing which again take it from me i can tell you that 
the pain can be pretty bad in the beginning, but by week six, you can ha- you're going to have some pain still, and it's not 100%, but again, it's just pain tolerance, right? There's not, as long as you don't have the risk of re-injuring it, and I think, you know, uh, someone like an MB has a high pain tolerance, um, but the integrity of the knee is still going to be there largely, and there's definitely, a, there's theoretically a couple of different ways that you rehab your knee um, in that regard, and some of it is, is non-weight-bearing for like weeks, and other types of strategies are you actually walk out like you're wearing a brace but you're walking like that day and then actually like within a week you're even taking the brace off and you're doing like mobility stuff and and then riding a bike even you're still weightless and stuff so you're maintaining that muscle or minimizing the atrophy and the loss of strength and so then you can come back even you know quicker so and if that's the approach that they're taking then this could actually be a blessing in disguise actually because then he'll be actually rested. He'll be fully recovered, ready to go, and he'll be full strength or nearly full strength going into the playoffs. So that is a question mark that could stop the Celtics. I'm not telling you that I'm banking on that or betting on it, but it is a legitimate possibility. And the reason why I said that is because I've had a lot of experience with those with those surgeries. Cleveland, the Knicks, they're, you know, they're nice. They're not on y'all level. All right, and Miami, I know they've been a thorn in your side, but you have swept them in three straight games this year. Mm. All right, so there is no excuse, Jason, for you guys to not get to the championship series. And you got to, obviously, once you get there, you got to beat Denver or whoever you face in the West. But, Jason, I believe in you. All right, at number one, there's a bunch of guys. 24 to be exact. Wow. The NBA All-Star. Large All right? list. All-Star weekend is this weekend in Indianapolis. And I look, I'm excited. I was watching Mac McClung uh highlights you on YouTube. Mac Dude did some nasty dunks. I can't <laughs> wait to see him Saturday night. I can't wait to see Steph and Sabrina yeah, Ionescu yeah. shoot the three-point shootout. But when I think of the actual game Sunday night. I get a bad taste in my mouth. Oh. I get a headache, all right? I get a stomach ache, wow. all right? Because the game has been hor- horrible. Listen to some of this, all right? A few years ago, you got the game became a joke. Then it graduated to being ridiculous. And then it moved on to being absolutely unwatchable, all right? In 2019, here's some of the numbers. They took 167 threes. I don't like that. that. (laughs) There's a threshold of how many threes is too many. Yeah, it's one. I don't know what it is, but that's way (laughs) beyond it. 2017, 83 dunks. Can you imagine 83 dunks? Can I tell you? Almost all of them uncontested. Exactly. None of them good. (laughs) 2016, the West won 196 to 173. Thank you. 196. The scoreboard doesn't go to 200, I don't think. So I don't know what they're going to do. I think you're digital now, bro. A little different than when you were covering the league. When I was saying the flip. Come on, come over. Last year, yeah. you're not going to believe this one. <laughs> Last year, there were seven fouls. <laughs> okay. Seven fouls in the game. So this, look, guys, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up. It's an easy fix. Just try. Yeah. yeah. Just try. <laughs> and I, we don't want playoff level intensity, but how about the intensity that you play with at UCLA in the summer? Thank you. Or the Drew League. Yes. Or maybe the <laughs> Rucker if you go there. Yes. Or or when you play an open gym in the summer. You I'm sure you're competing in the summer more yep. than you are Chris in the Chris League. Just give us that. Yeah. <laughs> Anything. Just give us that. That's it. That's Perfect. The well well done, bro. Chris, I would say that this bud list was nice. But it wasn't mad nice. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> and, and, and I don't usually say that, but an all NBA list. You, you're you're, not, you're not here for that. After the season. <laughs> I mean, and look, I like Dunks and Three, so that's why I watch the game. Yeah. So I'm a little biased that yeah. way. I, I'm, I'm putting the uh, Chicago Bears front office. Wow. Mm. And, and nobody has a, a more organizationally defining moment than they do this year. To have the number one overall pick for the second year in a row, and you didn't go get C.J. Stroud last year, and look, there was a lot of uh, disagreement on where C.J. would land in terms of his ability, but what he's done, and now you've got the number one overall again. So you got to make that right decision in terms of who you're going to bring in, and then that leads to what you're going to do with Justin Fields. How are you going to max? if you move on from him, how are you going to maximize what you get back for Justin? So there's that decision. Then you have the ninth overall pick. So you have a chance to add another great player to the organization. 
and you've got, I think it's $48 million in cap space. So you have plenty of room to go improve the team through free agency as well. So this is such a rare occurrence in NFL history to have this opportunity that they have and the firepower of trading the quarterback that's currently in house. So they are absolutely under duress. That's until, well done, Coach. So, so what would your recommendation be? I thought they should have moved on from Justin Fields last year. I, I didn't necessarily feel that strongly about the quarterback group. But this year, it seems like a, a, a lot of excellent candidates. I know that Nick is there you go. deeply there involved. You go. Kay- is not automatically Caleb? It's a, this is going to change before the draft. No. There will be a lot of give and take in terms of, of who <laughs> likes who. But we see it every year where it, this guy's a lock to go number one overall. We'll see when the when the number. But you pulled. would draft the quarter. Would, wh- whoever the quarterback is, you would draft. I'm saying if I'm the Chicago Bears, I I think that Justin has yeah. peaked there, yeah. and and if you have a chance to go get a someone who feels a franchise quarterback that'll be there for the next 15, 20 years, yep. you have to go. That, that's right. Uh, I'm putting James Harden on the bud list. Oh. And it, listen, Harden's been playing very well all year. The Clippers have been excellent. You know, after, right after they got him, they were tough. The were Clippers? Bruised Clippers. Thank you. Well, I was going to get that bruise. Uh, when they play well, you never say bruised Clippers. After the first couple of weeks, they've been playing excellent. However, current Milwaukee Bucks head coach and former podcaster Doc Rivers had interesting things to say or, you know, in between head coaching jobs when he was talking to Wilds' buddy Bill Simmons multiple times about what went wrong in Philly. And he keyed on James not making the All-Star game last year really bothered him. He was playing an unselfish brand of basketball, leading the league in assists. It wasn't rewarded. And then from that moment forward, he was a different player. Mm -hmm. And you saw kind of more of the solo act James Harden. The team wasn't quite as good. And then the playoffs, it really reared its head. I am very curious how, once again, not making an all-star team is going to land on James Harden's doorstep when the 24 brightest lights in the league are shining on Saturday or Sunday night and he wasn't invited to the party. Mm. Because the way he's playing right now, Brew, is exactly what the Clippers need, yep. and I doubted that he would do it. Thus, So, again, I think Harden especially will be judged come time playoffs. And for whatever reason... It's interesting because his game has also also shined during the regular season because he draws so much contact and fouls, and then come time playoffs, right? It's uh, t- they swallow the whistles. It's more physical, and so he doesn't go to the line as much. He doesn't get those calls, and then it changes. But this season, technically, it's less predicated on that right now, right? But he is still putting up points. He still is getting to the free throw line. He is still doing you know some of that dirty work. And I'm just curious to see how, again, that now looks um, in in um, in the playoffs. But to also go back a little bit to what uh, Eric Mangini was saying about the Bears, I think that's actually probably a great one, especially for the NFL, um, to put on the bud list because all eyes are on Chicago, and it's kind of like, what are you going to do? Because not only do you have the opportunity to draft Caleb Williams, but can you pull off magic with trading Justin Fields, right? Does Justin Fields end up going for like a random like third round pick or something? Which I'm not saying he will, but I I wouldn't necessarily be, you know, shocked if somehow the the Bears fumble this. Or do they pull off something amazing where they get like a first and a third or a first and a second or something? You know, something where you're just like, wow, they were really able to maximize this. Like, man, they literally rebuilt their team. And then again, where are those draft picks? Is it this season, next season? Like, you know, how does this, how is this all unfolding? Um... And so I'm just really curious to see, like, are the bit all do do the Bears do something unbelievable where they draft Caleb Williams and just really make magic, where they now are able to trade um, Justin Fields and really are able to set themselves up to be a great team essentially, like from the jump, or do they do something even crazier and they trade the Justin Fields pick and then they get some other haul and you know it's like there's there's kind of a few options here. It seems like. People who have some insider information strongly believe that they will be dressed, uh, drafting um, uh, Caleb Williams because then there's already leaks about like some interest in Justin Fields from like the Steelers. And typically that stuff only gets out when 
either Justin Fields camp wants it out or the Steelers feel um camp wants it out or the Chicago Bears. Um actually it wouldn't be the Steelers. The Steelers wouldn't want that leaked at all because then that hurts them because then there could be more of a bidding war. So it's really actually if anything Chicago's leaking that out to be like, "Hey, we want a bidding war. They're interested. Other people are, you know, if you're interested, you better give us a a you know, a competitive offer." So you can pretty much take that to the bank that that means Chicago is looking to deal Justin Fields in that regard. So it'll be really interesting. Um, I'm really curious to see what they end up doing um, and how competitive they can make their team and, and how quickly. Uh, but what do you guys all think? What do you think about this bud list? Um, do, what did you think about having um, AD up there as well as, uh, um, uh, you know, I uh, can't think of anyone's name right now. Um, James Harden and, and the Bears would love to hear your thoughts and also apparently the entire you know all-star team because you know as Bruce saying that game is just so boring and, and quite honestly I love the NBA I love basketball I love the playoffs but like I don't watch the all-star game it's, it's so boring I don't even care about the three-point competition anymore because it's just like kind of turned into this weird thing and I gotta watch it I guess but now that it's gonna be this like weird thing like I don't know and the dunk contest is just not that exciting to me so I've never really been into a lot of the all-star stuff. I care about the games. I care about the playoffs. Like, that's where I really care about it more than anything. But, um, you know, there's a lot of standing around and a lot of, like, overreactions, right? Someone dunks, and it's like you're at, they're acting like, you know, the most amazing thing happened. And I'm just like, okay, cool. It was a cool dunk. Don't get me wrong. But can we stop acting like that was, like, the most insane thing you've ever seen in your entire life? Like, you just saw Marco Robbie do, like, a quadruple backflip slam dunk. Like, you know, like, what are we talking about here? Um, but yeah, that's the way I view it. Would love to hear your thoughts. Are you guys excited about the all-star game? Um, what do you think about Chicago? Let me know. And please don't forget to subscribe. As I said, we are building an amazing community here and I would absolutely love to see part of it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much and see you next time.